Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to choose the right needle for your injections. And to do this, I'm going to go through or highlight three key factors that you need to take into consideration when trying to figure out which needle you should use for your injections. So this is just going to be a casual chat and it's going to be highlights of an article I've already done on my website, trthub.com. I'll leave a link to that article in the description of this video. But with that being said, let's just get straight into it. So there's three key factors you have to take into consideration when trying to figure out which needle is the right one for your injections, right? The first key factor is injection type, right? And by that, I mean, is it a subcutaneous injection or is it an intramuscular injection? Because they are slightly different. And to help you understand this, I'm gonna put a quick diagram up on the screen to illustrate this because I think it'll make things uh, a lot more clearer uh, and explain things a lot more clearly. So as you can see by the diagram on the screen, there's three layers that you've got to work with when doing an injection, right? You've got the top skin layer, which is very thin. Then you've got the next layer, which is a subcutaneous fat tissue. And then beneath that, you've got your muscle, right? So if you imagine doing an injection, that needle's got to go through the skin, then into the subcutaneous tissue, and then into the intramuscular tissue. If it's a subcutaneous injection, it only has to go into the subcutaneous fat, but if it's an intramuscular injection, it has to go all the way through the subcutaneous fat and into the muscle. So it only makes sense then that if you're doing an intramuscular injection, you'll need a longer needle because it has to get through all of those layers to finally get into the muscle. Whereas if you're doing a subcutaneous injection, you'll use a slightly shorter needle because all you have to get through is the skin and then you're in the subcutaneous fat. So this is why we use shorter needles for subcutaneous injections and why subcutaneous injections are slightly easier because you know where the fat is. You just have to get through the skin. But for intramuscular injections, they're slightly trickier because you have to get through the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, and then into the muscle, right? So that's the first factor you have to take into consideration. The second factor that you have to think about is the injection site or the injection location, right? So for subcutaneous fat or subcutaneous tissue, there's a couple of locations. I'll put an image up on the screen too that you can consider for your injections. And this is generally the same, almost the same as intramuscular injections, but they are things like the belly, the glutes, the thighs, uh, even the chest for subcutaneous injections. And these injections, like I've discussed uh, earlier, are slightly easy because you just have to go through the skin into the subcutaneous fat and then you inject there. However, when it comes to intramuscular injections, right, like we discussed earlier, you have to remember that these muscles are hidden below fat. And so if you look at the different uh, injection sites or locations that you get for intramuscular injections, the four most common ones are your ventro and your dorsal gluteal sites or your glute injections, which is basically the butt region. You've got your deltoid injection here in the shoulder and then you've got your quad injection basically at the top of your leg. Now, the glute, if you think about it and you look at it, is a lot larger muscle covered by a lot more fat. So for a glute injection, you would use a slightly longer needle because you've got to get through more fat to get into that muscle. However, with a deltoid or a quad injection, you would use a slightly shorter needle because there isn't as much fat to get through. It's a bit more shallow of a subcutaneous tissue that you need to get through to get into that muscle. So the, that's what you've got to consider uh, when it comes to the injection sites and the locations is what, where is the muscle and how much fat is covering it. And some areas are larger and have more fat covering them and some have less. And then finally, the final factor, or the third factor that you have to keep in mind and take into consideration when you're trying to figure out which is the correct needle to use for your injections and the correct needle length is what is your body type, right? You get three body types. I'll show you on the screen there again. Like always, you get the ectomorph, which is the kind of skinnier guy. You get the mesomorph, which is the normal or the athletic body type. And then you get the endomorph, which is the sort of larger or the fatter guy. And for the purposes of injections, really what you want to keep in mind is how much extra body fat or how much body fat do you carry around your muscles, right? For subcutaneous, this is not important because you're injecting into the fat. You don't have to go in past the fat into the muscle, you just go into the fat. So we're talking specifically about intramuscular injections now. So how much extra body fat do you, do you carry? Take this into consideration. So if you take a look at the glute, for example, you know, the glute is there and if you're a larger person, then you may have a whole lot of extra fat that you have to get through. So again, 
you have to take into consideration the site, which is normally it's a larger uh, uh, muscle, but uh, covered by fat. But if you're a larger person or a fatter person, you may have even more fat that you have to get through. So you may want to take the baseline needle and then maybe make it slightly longer. Whereas if you have less body fat, let's say you're really shredded or you're skinny and you don't have much fat covering a muscle, then you want to sort of take the baseline and maybe drop the length of that needle slightly. Now, this might sound a bit abstract, so let's take an example, right? Let's put, take these three factors into consideration and use an example of how you would decide which needle to use for your injection. So let's take a glute injection, right? A glute injection for a normal person with a normal body type, you would typically use a 1.5 inch 23 gauge needle. But let's say you're an overweight person, right? Grossly overweight. You're gonna have a lot of extra fat covering that glute muscle, which you have to get through before you get into the muscle with the needle. So what you probably do on this occasion is you would err on the side of a longer needle from the baseline. So the baseline was a 1.5. Maybe you want to consider a one and three, uh, uh, five eighths or one and three quarters, it may be up to a two inch needle if you really have to get to deep in through a lot of fat. Let's take a shredded person, right? That doesn't have too much fat there then uh, a skinny person, then maybe what you would do is err on a slightly shorter needle, maybe a one and a quarter inch or even a one inch needle if there really isn't much fat to get through into the muscle. Let's look at another example, right? For the uh, deltoid or for the quads, typically the baseline is probably a one inch needle, uh, which is a 25 gauge. Now, if you're carrying a bit more extra weight, and extra fat around these muscles, then maybe you'd consider a 1.25 inch needle, one and a quarter inch needle, because you've got a bit of extra fat to get through. And uh, in the same vein, if you're carrying less body fat, maybe you want to use a slightly shorter needle than a one inch, maybe like a five inch or five eighths inch of a needle. Now for subcutaneous, like we discussed earlier, this is not too important because once you're in the fat, that's it. That's all you, that's only where you have to be. You just got to get through the skin and then get into the fat, the subcutaneous tissue. And so for this, we would typically use a 3 8 to a 5 8 inch needle, 27 to 31 gauge. And you don't really have anything else to consider like you do with an intramuscular injection, because once you're in the fat, you're there and you can do the injection. You know, where you put in the fat is up to you. Maybe a slightly longer needle will go slightly deeper into the fat, but you want to make sure you stay in the fat and don't go too deep that you go into the intramuscular area or the muscle. So I hope that puts everything into perspective. Remember the three factors you have to take into consideration, the injection type, subcutaneous or intramuscular, the injection site, which is basically just which body part or muscle, and then finally your body type or how much extra body fat you're carrying or how much you're not carrying. And you have to sort of visualize this, take the baselines, you know, that people recommend maybe a one inch or 1.5 inch needle, and then adjust accordingly based on those three factors. And that should give you a lot clearer indication of the type of needle and the length of the needle that you should be using for your injections. So that's it. I hope you found it helpful. If you still have questions and you're not sure about something we discussed, it, this was more casual discussion, you know, off the cuff. But like I said, the full article goes into a lot more detail with diagrams and that on the website at trthub.com. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to go read that. But if you still have questions, then just leave with them in the comment section below. And I usually get back to all questions provided they're in context, you know, they're not too sort of way out there and totally unrelated to TRT or injections and that kind of thing. So again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.